Those who can do. Those who can't talk about those who can. Now, can you or can you not? Now, you just want to sit on the sideline and talk about other people, or can you step? Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Those who can do, those who can't, talk about those who can't. So can you or can you not? Wow, it has been a crazy, crazy offseason this year where the Cowboys truly look like ass. Uh, let, let's be clear here. Let's be clear here. There seems to be very little hope in anything that the Cowboys are doing right now. We've got Dak Prescott on the last year of his contract. We got dissed by Dan Quinn, who was the last coach hired, and the Cowboys were thinking that he was coming back. And then we're left holding the bag. They bring in Mike Zimmer. We hear that Cowboy players were tired and needed a nap against Green Bay. That CD says he's got to grow up. Dak Prescott, of course, is garbage and had to sue a person for slander, accusing him of rape. And Jerry Jones doing Jerry Jones things, saying, you know, we're going all in. <laughs> Actually, we're going to do more with less. And then proceeding to say, you know what, Mike McCarthy, he's on a one-year deal. <laughs> you know, he's going to prove it. He's going to prove it. We're going to turn up the heat on that guy. The guy who's got more wins consecutively than any coach in the history of the Cowboys. The highest win percentage the Cowboys have had in any coach. <sighs> yeah. All this since the 90s. It's better than Bill Parcells and Shane Gailey and Wade Phillips and Jason Garrett. In fact, since Troy Aikman, Dak Prescott's got the most wins of any quarterback consecutively. Three years with 36 wins. And I would say that in the course of the disappointing 30 years, 30 years, as crazy as it sounds, as crazy as everything is that swirls around the Cowboys, that this is the best the Cowboys have been through the last 30 years. I know we only got one playoff win in the last three seasons of being 12 win seasons. But you do realize that we only have four playoff wins in the last 30 years. Four. And I don't know that you can put all of that lack of winning on Mike McCarthy and Dak Prescott. Because clearly, something was not right those other years as well. We only have a four-year sample of Mike McCarthy. We've got an eight-year sample of Dak Prescott. During that time, you've had more playoff appearances than any of the other ones. I'm just saying, maybe we need to look more into the root of the problem. But as bad as things have been in this offseason, when we've seen the commanders become North Dallas, Washington, We've seen the Eagles go out and sign everybody and getting arguably the best free agent running back out there that is injury prone. Getting former Dallas Cowboys offensive coordinator, Kellen Moore, some believe is a miracle worker. Some believe here in Cowboys land that he is not that good. He'll get you some wow plays, but also you'll be doing uh, the Kellen O'Nos. Cowboys for free agency, they were on vacation. And they didn't even believe in some of their own guys. And so it's doom and gloom. But here is the interesting thing right now. The people that do gambling, 
They've been in it for a long time. They, a long, long time. The crazy thing is, is they have the over and under for the Cowboys at 10 and a half games. Now, if you're a doom and gloom guy, then you certainly think, oh, well, shit, the Cowboys, <laughs> they ain't winning four games. Then you take the under. But 10 and a half, that's a lot. That's a high number, guys. Vegas doesn't believe that the Cowboys are going to crash and burn. I'm curious. Let's see. Wait, let's see. NFL. Over and under. Let's see what they're having for this year for the other teams. Here's where it's interesting. So, so check this out. Kansas City, over and under, 11.5. San Francisco, 11.5. You, you can understand that. Those were the two Super Bowl teams. Baltimore Ravens, 11.5. Okay. Atlanta Falcons, that just signed Kurt frickin' Cousins, 10 and a half. Eagles with Saquon and all the moves that they've made, 10 and a half. Miami Dolphins, Tua. Remember when people used to say tank for Tua? Cowboys should tank for Tua. They're 10 and a half. Buffalo Bills with Josh Allen, 10 and a half. Dallas Cowboys, 10 and a half. So, they don't think, Vegas doesn't think that the Cowboys and Detroit Lions, 10 and a half. They don't seem to think that the Dallas Cowboys are going to be that bad. Ask me if I'm wrong. We've got the same over and under as Green Bay that beat us. The Bengals, of course, with, you know, best quarterback out there, you know, by some people's imagination. Miami Dolphins with Tua and Tariq Hill. The Eagles, of course, getting everybody that they've got. The Lions, the young up-and-coming team. They got us right there. Below us, they have the Jets at 9.5. They have the Texans. Sorry, Eastside, at 9.5. Steelers, 8.5. The Browns, playoff team, went out the same weekend we did, 8.5. Chargers, 8.5. Jaguars, 8.5. Colts, eight and a half. Rams, eight and a half. Tampa Bay with Baker Mayfield, eight and a half. Bears, eight and a half. So does that surprise you that the, the Bears with number one pick at eight and a half, same as Tampa Bay? New Orleans State, seven and a half. Seattle Seahawks, seven and a half. Commanders, seven and a half. Giants, six and a half. Raiders, six and a half. Minnesota, six and a half. Arizona, six and a half. Tennessee at five and a half. Broncos at five and a half. Carolina at four and a half and New England at four and a half. Does that surprise you? That Vegas doesn't think that the Cowboys are going to be a bad team. Here's what I think. Regardless of what the contract situation is, if the Cowboys said, you know what, Dak, we appreciate all the service that you've had with the Cowboys, but we're just going to, you know, we're going to play out the contract this year and we're going to go ahead and just start all over. And we want to wish you well with wherever you go and all that. Understand there's nothing personal. This is just strictly business. If that was the conversation or if the conversation was, you know what, Dak, here's the thing. Instead of us taking $90 million, $95 million and rolling it into another contract and ballooning it along with the sixty million dollars that it's going to be next year, you know, with, with a year. Since the salary cap went up more than we thought it was, then let's go ahead and we're going to take this season, and we're just going to take the bullet. We're just going to take that fifty-five million dollars right now this year. We're going to eat that. We're going to try and do what we do, you know, be frugal with our money and stuff and find some guys in here. we got a good core of people. We're going to draft a running back and an offensive lineman to help you out over there, and we'll be looking at some veterans to go on our defensive line. That's our plan. And then the following year, we have a little bit more flexibility of making you that highest-paid guy. We know it'll cost us more, but 
it's better to go ahead and, and, and rip the Band-Aid off of this contract and get this out the door. Just, just get rid of it, okay? If that's the conversation. Or if the conversation was from Dak Prescott, hey, guys, you know, um, I appreciate you, but I think I want to move on. I think um, the fan base here doesn't really appreciate me. Uh, I seem to be holding you back and so on. Uh, I love what you guys have done, that you took a chance on me in the fourth round and so on. And I want to, uh, you know, keep that relationship here. But I understand it's a business. And after this season, I, I want to go ahead and test the free agent market. If that was the conversation, I don't know which one it was. But here's what I can guarantee you of is Dak Prescott is going to go out there. He's going to bust his ass all off season. He's going to bring the receivers all together. They're going to be doing their trips. They're going to be working out in his backyard like they do. He is going to put forth all effort, full forth, all effort. He's not going to be a distraction one way or the other. He understands it's business. And the better I play, the better I play, either the Cowboys are going to owe me even more or I'll be the biggest free agent in the history of football. So the only thing I need to worry about is being the best player that I can be for the next year. Stay healthy, keep the interceptions down and the touchdowns up high. And win games. Because there are a multitude of teams that would be more than happy to pay Dak after another great season. So, with that being said, i got to get ready to go up to uh, work on this farmhouse. And I'm headed back home. Uh, got to do some things there. Take care of mama and dad and stuff. Because, you know, that's what I do. I try and take care of everybody. Rich Eisen. Shout out to Rich Eisen. They already have the Cowboys breakup party. Let's listen in. So, hey, listen, everybody. Um, Ian Rappaport let everyone know yesterday, according to his reporting, the Dallas Cowboys and Dak Prescott, as of right now, there's no uh, deep conversations about extending his contract. And you can't franchise tag him. And there's a no trade clause, which means the Cowboys want him to play out his contract. And he's going to play out his contract. Unless there is some sort of reversal. Now, can they make some sort of deal between now and the playing season? Absolutely, of course. If they don't, would that be totally nuts? Absolutely, of course. I think so. <laughs> so, as of right now, as of this very moment, Dak Prescott will be allowed to hit free agency next year. So there's no time like the present for a top five. <laughs> hit it. High five. One, two, three, four, five. Rich's top five. Yes, indeed. <laughs> top five teams that probably will be in on Dak in 2025. <laughs> yes, TJ, we're going here. Why not? Yes. Number five on this list. Yes. And of course, some teams might get a quarterback in the draft. Maybe. Which means... This is totally premature. Yeah. Completely insane to do this right now. Yeah, it seems but too a bit bad. Early. Too bad. Who Number knows? five on this list, <laughs> the Seattle Seahawks. Oh. Geno Smith, next year, his dead cap, if they decide not to have him anymore, 13 million bucks. You know what that is? Jump That's change. jump change in the National Football League. So if they don't get a quarterback now, and Sam Howell doesn't so seem to fit, maybe they go get Dak. Stick him up there in the Pacific Northwest and let him just, you know, cook. Let Dak cook. Up there. Why not? That's number five. Number four in this list. Let's say the uh, this team doesn't get a quarterback in the draft. And it's entirely possible that, that everybody's gone by the time that they draft. And they're not going to go ahead and push somebody up the board for a 13th overall pick. What about the... Las Vegas Raiders Raiders. being in on deck. Why not? Aiden O'Connell right now is their starting quarterback. And if they don't go ahead and get, you know, I know it's what what the Gardner's out there, right? Gardner's Gardner's out there. I know they got him for two years, but if Aiden O'Connell's not the guy and Gardner doesn't seem to be the guy and the bridge quarterback is only there, not for a new uh, quarterback that they draft, Dak Prescott. 
sitting right there. Very easy to go all in on Dak and let him finish his career out there in Las Vegas. Number three. Now, they've got a massive dead cap hit, but they're taking the lion's share of it this year. Mm -hmm. The dead cap for the Denver Broncos on Russell Wilson next year is 32 million bucks. That's a lot. And then you add Dak on top of it. Yeah. Is it something they can handle? Absolutely. Yeah, Walmart money. If they don't go ahead and get a, a quarterback in this year's draft, they're going to go get him. I think they're in on him. <laughs> Number two on this list. <laughs> Name me a team for which it would be more on brand to go ahead and take somebody else's starting quarterback and then just take a massive dead cap hit of their own just because it hasn't worked out. Name me another team for whom this is on brand. The New York Jets. This is so on brand for them. I know the dead cap for Aaron Rodgers would be 49 million bucks if he's not their starting quarterback in 2025. That's a lot. This is lot. so on brand for the Jets to bring Dak. But if the Jets aren't that team, Number one. the guy that Brockman has been talking about has been toast there. And I heard at the combine, they're done with him. The 20... Mm. $2 million dead cap hit for this guy in 2025 makes it totally and completely understandable if they don't get a quarterback in this year's draft for the New York Giants to tell Dak Prescott, you're a giant, you're not a cowboy anymore. And if he does have any sense of wanting to stick it to the Jones family, that's the wow. way to do it. Yes. To the Giants. The New York football Giants are number that one crazy. on my list. So there it goes. Seahawks, it. Raiders, Broncos, Jets. What a jet thing that would be. Yeah, you know, it doesn't work out for Aaron Rodgers. You know what we're going to do? We're well. not going to go ahead and draft another one. <laughs> we're not going to do that. We're going to pay him all the dead cap because maybe he's injured. And he's out. And then you got uh, Dak as a jet. And if not a jet, then a giant. Paul Heyman is in hour number three because TJ is staring a hole through me right now. I have to make him happy. I like Dak in New York. How about that? Hit, hit okay, him. We need one more. Yes, let's do one oh. more. All right, we'll get one more. Here's one more. Here's Stinks. one more. This is it. This is it, man. The one more. No, the oh. Cowboys are going to be in on him. Don't worry. They're not the one more. All right? Okay. That's so obvious. <laughs> but. Get your damn act together. What happens if the guy that they went ahead and have given the job to his pole position oh. doesn't work out? Oh. What if they get a look-see at Justin Fields uh, all, yeah. all year long? Oh. And say he's not the guy, but they kind of, before this season, signed him to a little two-year deal. And they want to see how uh, life wow. is with Dak. Maybe the Steelers are all in. Because right now, you know what their 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 offense costs right now? Not a lot. Nothing. Like, like I don't even think bucks. it's $15 million. It's a $15 yeah. million dollar offense right now. <laughs> 15 so they'll have enough money to, Holy shit. to give Dak... A multiple of that. <laughs> Takes a nice chunk out of the pot. I think the Steelers <laughs> might be in on Dak and let him finish wow. the his career in Pittsburgh. Interesting. Do you see how easy it is? To manipulate stuff? Not to manipulate. <laughs> how easy it is to understand that what the Cowboys are doing right now is fire playing. It is and totally nuts. <laughs> yeah. It is. But they want to go all in on Dak. And I didn't understand this definition of all in. I didn't understand it when I heard it for the first time at the Combine. I still don't understand it right now. And I think they need to be all in on talking about a conversation with Dak to extend him. Because wow. this is nuts. Catch the rich eyes. Wow. That would be correct. Could you imagine if Dak Prescott went, oh my God, to the New York Giants? <sighs> I really wouldn't be able to live with Cop Pizzle if that were to happen. Wow. All righty, good people. As you know, it's time for me to go to work, get some, try and make some money so I can buy some more things here for the studio and the set here. As always, you know I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Hope you all have a great day, and we'll keep you up to speed with anything that goes on with the crazy ass. Dallas Cowboys, and I will see you soon. Peace.